is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony and today we are in the new 2020 hyundai palisade and i gotta be honest i'm quite excited for this one reason being is because my family does have the three row hyundai santa fe or santa fe xl as it is now called however the hyundai palisade is going to be the three row suv replacing my current santa fe so is it time to trade up Today we are going to find out, and as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Hyundai Palisade. First one being the SE, starting at $31,550. Then SEL, which is the one we have today, starting at $33,500. And lastly, the Limited, starting at $44,700. And that was all pricing for the front-wheel drive versions. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive, simply add $1,700 to any of those prices. But so that regardless of trim level, the power plant is going to to be the same on the Palisade. Powering this beast is a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6, putting out 291 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound-feet of torque available at 5,200 RPM. Power again sent to front wheels or all wheels. Actually, interesting tidbit about that all-wheel drive system. That is the H-Track all-wheel drive system, originally reserved for Hyundai's luxury brand Genesis. However, now available as the all-wheel drive setup for most Hyundais, including this new Palisade. So that is definitely quite nice but so anyways power sent to the ground through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will definitely be testing out in a little bit here and all in all zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 7.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 19 city 26 highway for the front wheel drive 19 city 24 highway for the all-wheel drive that's essentially pretty on par for the course as far as all-wheel drive three row suvs go but so that before we do any kind of accelerations in the new Palisade, there is a circular dial with several different drive modes available on this one, including comfort, eco, sport, snow, and smart. Smart being the driving mode where the Palisade essentially determines which driving mode is best based on your current driving style. So that's pretty cool. But so we are not going to put it in that smart driving mode today. What I'm going to do is turn this little knob to the left here, and that is going to give me a sport driving mode because I want to now test out the paddle shifters on this Palisade because a lot of times with SUVs, paddle shifters don't really react all that quickly, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. Let's do a quick little acceleration as well. Let's test out the acceleration and the paddle shifters on this new 2020 Hyundai Palisade. Slight delay to the paddle shifters, but as far as acceleration goes in a three row SUV, it's certainly more than enough power. Not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. Definitely 300 horsepower. That's gonna be plenty of horsepower in just about any vehicle that you go with. But so then touching on braking a little bit, braking is of course equally important. You will of course find four wheel disc brakes on the new 2020 Palisade and let's test out the braking feel. It's, it's freaking excellent. The braking feel is wonderful. Instantly brings you to a stop. No brake pedal delay or anything like that. So well done Hyundai. I love the braking feel in this thing. When it comes to suspension and handling, up front you will find a McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, an independent multi-link rear suspension. And as far as ride quality goes, I think this is the first thing I muttered to myself before I started filming. Smooth, man. Smooth, son. This thing is smooth, quite a bit noticeably smoother than my current Hyundai Santa Fe XL actually. So for that reason, I am loving the new Palisade. It is a very smooth ride, I gotta say. As far as cabin noise goes, definitely not getting too much exterior noises coming into the cabin, if any actually. So very quiet ride inside. Touching on steering feel a little bit. This is probably, if I had a constructive criticism, my only one for the Palisade. It is a little bit of a loosey-goosey steering wheel, but I am in comfort mode right now. So having said that, you can adjust the steering sensitivity slightly. If I were to put it in that sport driving mode, it does give you a little bit of a weightier feel to it. It's not too much of a difference, but if you wanted a heavier steering feel, that's gonna be there for you as well. And then touching on visibility a little bit, I gotta say, it is 100% better than the Santa Fe XL that I currently have. And those third row headrests also don't protrude too much up into the rear visibility as well. So overall, I would definitely say the visibility is much, much better in the Hyundai Palisade. I absolutely love it. But did would also mention when it comes to visibility, you will get a head up display if you went with the limited trim level that we don't actually have today. So that's gonna be there for you. Better help you keep your eyes on the road. But now let's now take a look at the exterior because I do like the look of this new 2020 Hyundai Palisade. 
And so starting up front, you will find a large front grille with rectangular blocks if you go with the SE or SEL trim levels. However, if you want with the limited, you will find chrome horizontal bars. And that is part of the way you're going to be able to distinguish the trim levels. But to the sides, projector beam headlights will come with the SE and SEL trim levels. Limited is going to give you LED headlights, but either way, regardless of trim level, you will get LED daytime running lights with LED accent lighting as well. And make your way to the side, roof rails will come standard with the SEL and limited trim levels. Rear privacy glass, of course, coming standard for all trim levels. And here's one of the key differences that I focus on when it comes to the Palisade, is there is a black plastic lower lip along the side skirts and the front bumper. If you want with the SE or SEL trim levels, I currently have that on my Santa Fe XL. If you wanted to turn that into body colored side skirts and front lip, you will have to go with the limited trim level. I gotta be honest, it looks a heck of a lot better. Not that I mind the other look, but it just looks better with the limited setup there. Then zooming in on the side mirrors, I absolutely love this design. Power adjustable body colored side mirrors, of course, will come with all trim levels. They will come heated as well, and you will get LED integrated turn signals with the SEL or limited trim levels. And when I mention the design, I mean the LED integrated turn signals. Usually it's just one little rectangular thing that blinks, but there's a very nice nice design cue kind of in a sideways U shape on these side mirrors and I do happen to like that it's different and it looks good so I'm a fan also zooming out you're gonna find satin chrome door handles if you want with the SEL or limited trim levels and looking down at the wheel setup SE and SEL give you 18 inch alloy wheels there are some optional wheel setups for those two trims however and the limited trim is gonna give you 20 inch alloy wheels and make your way to the back rear spoiler with integrated brake light will come standard just below that a rear window wiper if you wanted led tail lights that is going to come standard with the limited and of course just beside them you will find h-track badging if you want with the all-wheel drive system and again that is hyundai and genesis's all-wheel drive system is definitely very nice and just below all of it a single exhaust outlet with dual chrome tips so you guys know what we have to do next even though we're in an suv as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around back when it comes to opening that rear lift gate there is a hands-free smart lift gate if you want with the limited trim level and when it comes to the power lift gate here's a little interesting fact hyundai claims it is the fastest opening and closing rear lift gate in the business right now so here's a quick little demonstration but so anyways once opened up cargo capacity behind that third row comes in at 18 cubic feet if you fold that down, and by the way, you can fold that third row down. It is a power folding third row or is available as a power folding third row. It doesn't come standard, but it's an option there if you wanted it. Once folded down behind that second row, cubic feetness comes in at 45.8. And with all rows folded, 86.4 cubic feet. So kind of for comparison's sake, since I do have the Santa Fe XL, the cubic feet in the Santa Fe XL comes in at 80. So definitely a substantial difference between that one and the new Palisade. Did what I also mentioned in that cargo area, there is a substantial amount of in-floor storage if you wanted it as well. But now let's make our way to the rear seats and see if I actually fit in these. When it comes to third row legroom, that is going to come in at 31.4 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. And what I did actually like about getting into that third row is to get into the third row, all you need to do is press one button on the second row seat. That's going to completely slide forward. And in addition to that, you have a grab handle to help you get into the third row. And once you're in that third row, not only do you have USB charging ports to charge up your smartphone or tablet but you also have a reclining third row seat if you want with the limited and that is actually an option that we have here on the sel trim level so little extra luxury for the third row passengers it's definitely quite nice make your way to the second row that comes in at 42.4 inches of legroom that is a ton for reference i mean even six feet tall definitely more than enough space for me back there and you're going to find usb charging ports found on the back sides of the front seats that's definitely something Something different I kind of like it it's different I like different but cup holders are gonna be absolutely everywhere in this thing you guys can see and you're probably wondering you're taking a look at the captain's chairs I have on this particular Palisade here today there is second row bench seating that's gonna come standard with the SE it is gonna be optional on the SEL however second row 
captain's chairs are gonna come standard with the SEL or limited trim levels. Did wanna also mention for some added comfort for those second row passengers, there are heated and ventilated rear seats as well. And when you're getting in and out of this one, here's a feature that I have never seen on any other SUVs before. There is what I guess I would call a coat hanger for your seat belts. Basically helps keep the seat belts out of the way so you can freely move in between the rows, but Nobody else is doing that. I like that because that does sometimes get in the way when you're making your way to that third row at least. But anywho, let's make our way up to the front seats. Power front seats with power lumbar will come standard with the SEL trim leveling up. You will also get a leg cushion extension for the driver's seat if you go with the limited. That's usually something you find on like a BMW or Mercedes or something like that. That's nice. Cloth services come with the SE and SEL trim levels. Premium Napa leather comes with the limited. And again, with the SEL that we have today, we do have that Napa leather leather because it is an option if you wanted it with the SEL. And when it comes to those front seats, heated front seats will come with the SEL and limited trim levels and you will get ventilated front seats if you went with the limited. Then take a look up front, there is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel and it does kind of have a three spoke design to it and it is leather wrapped if you went with the SEL trim level and up and it will come heated actually as well if you want with the limited. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over, lock, unlock that button to pop the rear hatch and that circular button that we have on our key today, that is actually an optional remote start that we happen to have here. So all you need to do is simply hold that down and the Palisade is going to start up for you, warming up on super cold days here in Pennsylvania. So that's definitely pretty nice as well. If you wanted the push button start, that is gonna come with the SEL or limited trim levels. SE trim level is actually gonna come with the standard turnkey set up there. But anyways, once started up, this is where the Palisade can differ quite substantially, comparatively speaking to the Kia Telluride at least. The gauge setup that we have today, you got your tachometer on your left, speedometer on your right. I like the bluish hue around the exterior perimeter as well. There is a seven inch digital display front and center, which can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. There's a ton of different things you can display, like when you need your next oil change, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, a digital speedometer if you wanted it, bunch of other stuff, but really where the difference comes in is there is an optional 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster available that's actually going to come standard on the limited trim level but that is going to give you a full digital gauge cluster just like BMW is doing or Audi or a lot of the high-end manufacturers you can now find it on the Hyundai Palisade limited trim level that is definitely quite nice so I am definitely a fan of that but now let's make our way to overall interior quality ambient lighting with 64 color options come with the limited trim level that's definitely nice nice LED interior lighting comes with that limited as well by the way rear ventilation is going to come standard for all three rows those are those circular air vents in the roof of the Palisade auto dimming rear view mirror with home link controls for up to three different garage doors are going to come with the SEL trim level and up and I gotta say that's definitely a big feature because I have the garage door opener that clips to the vanity mirror and sometimes that gets a little bit noisy so I do like the home link controls for that reason but some of the cooler features is there is a driver talk in car intercom system so you can produce project your voice throughout all three rows, kind of like a school bus driver would. Possibly unnecessary, but definitely pretty cool. Dual panel sunroof is gonna come with a limited trim level. However, there is a standard sunroof available, and that is actually the one you're looking at right now. And overall, I do love the interior of this Hyundai Palisade. It is a very clean design. I like how the tech display ties in with the gauges. I'll get more into the tech display in a second here, but the lighter color interior is definitely quite nice. It actually kind of looks like a yacht inside inside of this palisade and let me show you guys a little bit in the center here to use these cup holders there's actually buttons that you can press that kind of push out the other side of the cup holder you see what I'm saying here but kind of scared me how quick they open up there but I thought that was pretty cool just beside that there is a wireless phone charging system there along with USB port as well just behind that the center armrest underneath of that there is a very deep storage system I will also say that overall for Hyundai not being a luxury brand so to speak it is a very high-end finish it's all in the details like you guys can see on the air vents there is a little texturized aluminum look to the little buttons where you can adjust the air vents they could have been just a black plastic but Hyundai didn't do that also like that the silver trim detail ties in from the doors to above the 
the dash as well. And again, the LED interior lighting, the texturized silver button to open up the power moonroof. It's all in the details and Hyundai covered their bases on all of this. But so now since I have already mentioned it, let's make our way to the tech display because we do have an upgraded tech display. I'm gonna be honest, there is an eight inch color touchscreen display that comes with the SE and SEL trim levels. However, there is a 10.25 inch color touchscreen display if you want with the limited. And again, it's optional on the SEL and that is the one we have today that ties in very nicely with the gauge setup. It kind of all makes it look very uniform, but Bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard either way, as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Again, standard either way. Factory navigation system is gonna come with the limited and it is gonna be part of that optional upgrade that you can go with with the SEL trim level. Did wanna also mention there is something called quiet mode. Well, quiet mode selected basically the radio or the speakers, anything coming out of the speakers is only gonna be played in the front seats. All the speakers behind those front seats are gonna be disabled essentially, at least until you turn quiet mode back off. But that's kinda of cool if maybe if you you have some kids sleeping in the back, but you still want to listen to the radio up front. That's kind of nice. And like I was mentioning earlier, we do have the optional driver talk system with the intercom. So let's go ahead and test that out real quick. <laughs> this intercom system is nuts, bro. And so then in addition to that awesome system, there is also your radio settings as expected. And when it comes to the sound system, there is a six speaker sound system for the SE or SEL trim levels. However, there is a 12 speaker Harman Kardon surround sound system with a limited with 630 watts. But that of course is not the sound system that we have today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, more than adequate for the Palisade. Not anything that's gonna take your breath away like Bowers and Wilkins and Mark Levinson or something like that, but still, definitely quite a nice sound system for the Palisade. But so last thing on the text display I wanted to mention is when you do put the Palisade in reverse, you will find a rear view camera with dynamic grid lines letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead me into safety. And so to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also a driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also rear child door locks back there as well but here's where the safety gets good all trim levels of the new 2020 palisade will also give you reverse parking distance warning where the car is going to beep at you if you get a little too close to an object or a tree in my case there is also going to come standard a rear occupant alert so you don't leave any people or dogs or anything like that in the vehicle Forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, also standard lane keep assist, driver attention warning. So the Palisade is gonna monitor your driving habits and then alert you if it feels you are starting to get tired or if you're starting to swerve a little bit too much or something like that. SEL trim level is also gonna add a blind spot warning system with rear cross traffic alert. And lastly, the limited is also gonna give you front parking distance warning. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there, and I will see you guys in the next video. Let's take old. This thing is driving itself. <laughs> it just steered me back in the lane. You're ridiculous, Palisade, you're ridiculous. <laughs>